Dear viewers, welcome to the Northside Satellite Channel and Telenumir TV. The Nursat Satellite Office in Holy Land in Jordan and Palestine, represented by its regional director, Dr. Basima Sam'an and the team, present their sincere congratulations and blessing to His Majesty King Abdullah II and his faithful Crown Prince and the whole Jordanian family in the occasion of Eid al-Fitr, praying to God to protect His Majesty, the dear Jordanian people and the Arab and Islamic worlds and keep them in goodness, health and safety. And to spare humanity as whole from this epidemic resulting from the spread of the coronavirus, and we all pray for the Holy Land and its people, hoping that peace will prevail among them soon. Now let's start with the headlines. Pope Francis, Jerusalem is a place of prayer and peace, not a place of violence. The Orthodox Church celebrates the Feast of the Fountain of Life of the Mother of God. The fifth anniversary of the inauguration of the Blessed Mary Alphonsine Shrine in Al Salt. Prime Minister Dr. Bishar al khassawni issued a notice according to which the night ban hours were reduced from the first day of Eid al-Fitr. We also have a ceremonial mass in the town of Al-Khadr in Bethlehem on the occasion of St. George's Day. Welcome back. His Holiness Pope Francis issued a plea after reciting Rejoice Queen of Heaven, in which he said, I follow with particular concern the events taking place in Jerusalem. I pray that it will be a place of meeting and not a place of violent clashes. A place of prayer and peace, I invite everyone to search for common solutions so that the multiple identity is respected, religious and cultures of the holy city and brotherhood prevail. Pope Francis concluded his calling by saying, violence only breeds violence, enough clashes. In the same context, the patriarchs and heads of churches of Jerusalem expressed their deep concern about the related developments whether in Al-Aqsa Mosque or in Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood, and the recent violent incidents carried out by the occupation authorities in East Jerusalem. A statement issued said, we are deeply disappointed and concerned about the acts of violence that violates the sanctity of Jerusalemites and Al-Quds as a city of peace. We affirm that actions that undermine the safety of worshippers and the dignity of Palestinians who are evicted from their homes are unacceptable acts. The statement clarified that the special character of the holy city, in light of the current situation, forces all parties to preserve the delicate situation in the city. The patriarchs and heads of churches of Jerusalem called on the international community and all those with good intentions to intervene to stop these provocative acts and to continue praying for the peace of Jerusalem. For its part, the Latin Patriarchate in Jerusalem affirmed that it joins its voice to the voice of all the heads of the Christian churches in Jerusalem noting that what is happening in Jerusalem at the hands of the Israeli occupation forces is a violation of the sanctity of the people of Jerusalem and the sanctity of the city, the city of peace, which requires immediate and urgent intervention. The Orthodox Church celebrated the Feast of the Fountain of Life of the Mother of God, and on this glorious occasion, Archbishop Christophorus Atallah presided over the service of the Divine Liturgy, with the participation of a group of priests and deacons in a monastery of the Blessed Virgin, the Fountain of Life in Dibbin, in the presence of Mother Awais, head of the monastery and her brother, in the presence of a group of believers amid precautionary measures to preserve public health and safety. In his spiritual speech, His Excellency explained that the Holy Church sought to highlight the role of the Most Holy Mother of God in order for us to honor and glorify her. And thus, the joys of the blessed feast are mixed with the joys of the glorious resurrection. In this great holy week, we are between the arms of Her Holiness in Her monastery in the Bin. And who can seek the help of our Mother, full of grace, and won't get her fast aid and response? Her status in the Church is the Eternally Virgin and the Mother of God. It is very important to have Her Holiness's status in our conscience, as it was set by our Holy Orthodox Church, Mother of God and Eternally Virgin before, during and after giving birth. She remained a Virgin and pure. This is the status of the Mother of God in our Orthodox Church and in our hearts. And for that, the Church today shows her as a role model for us. 
in order to follow her footsteps in a time where all role models in our lives have been destroyed. The Church chose our Holy Mother as a role model to our daughters and sons in our lives here. These days coincide with the fifth anniversary of the inauguration of the Utopian Shrine of Mary Alphonsine, located in the Latin Church of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary in Salt, where she served in the first school in Jordan for the schools of the Latin Patriarchate for two years, and a large celebration was held on the occasion to inaugurate the shrine in the year 2000, under the patronage of Patriarch Fuad Atwal and the presence of religious officials and public figures, Christians and Muslims, and a large group of citizens. On this blessed occasion, we recall Saint Alphonsine and her silent mission and service that lasted for two years in salt between the years 1987 and 1989, which was characterized by love, humility, sacrifice, and generosity, where Dr. Sam'an, the director of Nursat Satellite Office in the Holy Land, Jordan, and Palestine, inaugurated the shrine at the expense of her own family. It is noteworthy that the founder of the Rosary Sister Mary Alphonsine was declared a saint on the 17th of May 2015 at the hands of His Holiness Pope Francis in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. On this occasion, we thank God Almighty and then the family of Dr. Basima Sam'an for their faithful effort for the inauguration of this holy place in the Blessed Jordan. Prime Minister Dr. Bishr al-Khassawne issued a notice according to which the night ban hours were reduced from the first day of Eid al-Fitr, so that they become for individuals from 11 in the evening until 6 in the morning for all days of the week, and for establishments from 10 at night until 6 in the morning for all days of the week, with the exception of establishment whose work in otherwise decided by the Prime Minister. And this communication comes within the framework of the safe mitigation measures that the government takes according to the developments of the epidemiological situation up to the strategic goal of reaching a safe summer, in which most sectors and the economic acceleration have returned to its normal status. Through the application of health protocols and adherence to vaccinations, and the government indicated that our arrival for a safe summer means the opening of most sectors at the beginning of next July, and also a return to in-person education in schools and universities next September. A ceremonial Mass was held on the occasion of St. George's Day, with the participation of a number of father priests and deacons, and in the presence of a large group of believers from the region. More in this message of our representative in the Holy Land, Marlene Hadwe. On the occasion of St. George's Day, a festive mass was held in the town of Al Khadr near Bethlehem, headed by Archbishop Theophanes, Archbishop of Jerash, with the participation of the head of the monastery, Archimanderite Ananias, Archimanderite Ignatius, Fathers Khadr Barakmi, Nectarius, Father Por Alam, priests, and deacons. The Greek Orthodox choir also celebrated the mass in the presence and organization of the Greek Orthodox Scouts group and a large crowd of believers from the region. Father Barakmi delivered the speech of Bishop Theophanes, in which he congratulated the Church's sons and all attendees. He also gave a brief summary of the life of St. George, the Great Martyr. After the Mass, the traditional circling took place in the church square with the participation of the Mayor of Al Khadr, lawyer Ahmad Salah, members of the Municipal Council and the Faithful, where the prayers were held on the sound of church bells and choir chants. After completion, everyone went to the monastery hall to congratulate on this occasion. It is worth noting that the celebration continues over a period and constitutes a scene of true brotherhood among the people 
through the participation of all without discrimination. On the same occasion, the Orthodox Church celebrated the Feast of St. George, where the Archimandrite Erinimos, the spiritual head of the city of Hayes, presided over the service of the Divine Liturgy, with the participation of Archimandrite Christophorus Haddad and the group of the Faithful Fathers in the Shrine of St. George al Khadr, amid precautionary and preventative measures that ensure social distancing and public safety. And at the St. Joseph Latin Church in Jabal Amman, a ceremonial Mass was held on the occasion of the Feast of Divine Mercy. The sermon presided over by the pastor of the church, Father Wissam Mansour. His Holiness indicated that the Feast of Divine Mercy is a glorification of one of the attributes of God that our limited human mind cannot comprehend. Where the Lord Jesus chose the first Sunday after the glorious Easter holiday to celebrate the Feast of Mercy, because there is a close relationship between the mystery of the forgiveness of sins on Easter and the mystery of the Divine Mercy. Father Mansour added, The Divine Mercy Sunday and the appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ to Saint Faustina are the affirmation to this divine truth that in my death and resurrection is your victory, in my death and the resurrection is your strength. The blood and water that came down from Jesus' side are the symbol of all blessings and divine givings that we need, and it is the support to our weakness, doubtfulness, and reluctance in order for us to overcome them and declare the victory of Jesus Christ. So the appearances of Jesus Christ to Saint Faustina that are shown in this picture, which he himself asked for it to be printed, and two rays appeared from his heart and his stabbed side, white and red, symbolizing the water and blood that came out from his heart after he was stabbed by a soldier with a spear. And the Church reminds us that every time we celebrate in the prayers of the feast to ask God the fountain of mercy to help us always to realize in what water He has washed us and in what blood we have been redeemed. And from the same symbols and meanings that exploded on the cross, Jesus wanted for this mercy and these signs to be and stay the signs of victory. The Orthodox Church celebrated on the 9th of this May the Sunday of the Apostle Thomas, which falls liturgically on the first Sunday after the glorious Easter. And on this beautiful occasion, Bishop Christophorus Atalla presided over the service of the Divine Liturgy, with the participation of a group of priests and deacons in the presence of the believers of the Divine Ascension Church in Khalda. In the Sermon of the Mass, His Excellency said, we must ask God to dwell amongst us and remove all fear, anxiety, and turmoil. We also ask Him to strengthen our faith and enlighten us with the Holy Spirit and to deal with the challenges facing us in this time with confidence in the Lord. He added, Christ has risen, and my children, this is what shows that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a well-declared truth from heaven. Jesus said, I am the truth, the path, life, and resurrection. My children, Jesus, after his resurrection from the dead, in flesh he maintained the scars of the nails on his hands and feet, and scars of the spear on his side. And this is how we see Jesus in the and this is how we will see Jesus in the heavenly kingdom and recognize him, our God, the incarnated. That's why he showed the apostles his hand and feet, and they rejoiced. How important it is, my children, that we look during these times that we live in for the true peace from God. I hear from various areas, and unfortunately, that we get some ideas, exercises, and some unrelated teachings to us even from Asian religions that our Jordanian society is getting affected by. I hear that some people do relaxing exercises and some try to control their inner self by practicing different kinds of methods and so on from different kinds of practices that are spreading in a dangerous way in our society because the spiritually ignorant society is giving these practices value. 
Be careful, my children. Anything that does not have Jesus in it will harm, and it will have evil forces in it, and it would be far away from Jesus. Be careful. The General Director of Tourism Promotion Authority, Dr. Abdul Razak Arabiyat, said that the indicators of the return of the tourism movement to the kingdom during the coming period have become strong, and added that the work plan of the authority currently includes several aspects, including the revitalization of the local tourism and the return of tourism of neighboring countries to be attracted to visit the kingdom, indicating that there are final negotiations with major international tourism offices to attract more tourists and in huge numbers to the kingdom, expecting more tourism sectors to open, and grant more incentive measures to this sector after the Eid al-Fitr holiday. And al Arabiyat said that the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities and the Tourism Promotion Authority will work together to stimulate local tourism through Urdun Najanna program, which was announced by the Minister of Tourism and Antiquities recently, as it will support domestic tourism. The Church of St. Sharbel for the Maronites in Marj al-Hamam in Amman is considered one of the most beautiful churches in the kingdom due to its gorgeous location among the pine forest and the surrounding woods in the area. Nursat Lens and within a series of episodes, Kenny City Program visited the church and prepared the following report. Between those mountains and wooded forest lies a Maronite church on a land in Marj al-Hamam, area in Amman, bearing the name of Saint Charbel, who lived in our Arab countries and his fame spread around the globe. We pause today to enumerate for you historical milestones in the formation of this church, which makes you shiver when you enter it. San Sharbel Church is considered the first Maronite church in Jordan. In 1998, His Majesty the late King Hussein bin Talal granted land to the Maronite Patriarch on which to build the church. In the same year, his beatitude Cardinal Mar Nasrallah Sfer congratulated and blessed the construction work and laid the necessary foundations. And on October 9, 2003, his beatitude inaugurated the first section of the Maronite Center under the generous patronage of His Majesty King Abdullah bin Hussein II. In 2005, his beatitude patriarch Sfer laid the foundation stone in order for work to be done on the construction of the church, which Bishop George Sheehan supervised with all his affection. The height of the church is about 15 meters, and its width is about 20 meters. The inside of the church is distinguished with a wall on which a painted icon of St. Charbel, and above it is one of the Lord Jesus. And on the side of the church, there is a small shrine containing the icon and the relics of the saint, from which all those far and near may be blessed. In the vicinity of the church are several facilities built recently. The priest of the parish, Father Samir Zaknoun, told us about them, and he also referred to the activities. In this parish, in addition to the church building that is currently available, we have the main facilities that consist of the priestess residence, which is a two-story house. The first floor consists of offices, the parish office, a meeting room, a small reception area, and a big official reception hall, which was recently renovated, in addition to the public lounge where people could use casually. We also have in our facilities in the church the lower story that was transformed into the lounge, where we have welcomed our Iraqi brothers two years ago. And we have renovated this place and started to receive the pilgrims that come from all places.
Of course, there is a kitchen, eating area, lobby for meetings and gatherings, and we have the big hall, which at first was the church where we used to pray and celebrate before building this church. Also, in the same building, we have split apart and turned it into a nursery, St. Akelina Nursery, and we have the garden, St. Sharbil Garden, or the Monastery Garden, that receives all the people who like to come and hang out with their families and to have a good time and spend the day. A good vessel for holiness. Let your perfume spread throughout the entire world. Pray for us. Now, our viewers, we have come to the end of our news. And those were the headlines. Pope Francis, Jerusalem is a place of prayer and peace, not a place of violence. The Orthodox Church celebrates the Feast of the Fountain of Life of the Mother of God. The fifth anniversary of the inauguration of the Blessed Mary Alphonsine Shrine in Al-Salt. Prime Minister Dr. Bishr al khassawne issued a notice according to which the night ban hours were reduced from the first day of Eid al-Fitr. A ceremonial mass in the town of Al-Khadr, Bethlehem, on the occasion of St. George's Day. We've come to the end of our program. Until we meet again, have a good day.